uh, October 25th, 2008. That was a Saturday, you know? So essentially what I do is tell you the day of the week for any given date. But more importantly, what I do is something that is called, let me think, let me think because I forgot the word. Oh no, I got it, I got it. It's a four letter word. It's called math. So what I'm doing, what I actually do is math. For example, Tanya, do you mind sharing your birthday so we can use yours as an example? Um, April 3rd, 1979. That was a Tuesday, April 3rd, 1979. So let me show you, you exactly how I do it in my head. I go, I normally start with the 79. 79 plus 79 divided by four, that will be 19.75. That will be one more because you have to run up. 20, 79 plus 20 will be 99 plus one more because 20 centimeters one more will be 100 plus three because you say April 3rd will be 103 plus four because you say April 107, 107 divided by seven. The remainder, when you divide by seven is two. When the remainder is two, it's a Tuesday. One is one is a Monday, two is a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, six Saturday. And if it is a zero, it's of course Sunday. So who else wants to know the day of the week you were born? Please feel free to unmute yourself or ask via the chat. What do you guys prefer? Alena, you were going to say yours. I'm sorry. March 19th, 2008. Okay, that was a Wednesday. This year is going to be a Saturday. That's the good news that I have for you. This year is going to be a Saturday. All right. So I see October 27, 1986. That was a Monday from Karen. Anyone else? Okay, see August 11, 2008, also another Monday, a lot of Mondays here. That's great. March 9, 2009, guess what? Another Monday. I was born on a Monday too. I guess we're all hard worker people. I, I guess we have a passion for math. That's why, that's why we were born on Mondays and Tuesdays, right? <laughs> all right, so if you want, what I'm going to do right now, I'm gonna share with you my trick. The math, oh, Kate, I see Katie Johnson, you're raising your hand, okay. Yeah. Hi, how are you? August 26. Uh -huh. What year? 2015. 2015, that was a Wednesday. And this year is going to be a Friday. So you're going to have fun this Friday, this year on a Friday. <laughs> All right, anybody else before I start explaining the trick? Anyone else? No, Shep Patel, Nicholas Huffman. Oh, I think Nicholas, you, you already asked me yours. Anyone else? Okay, so let's do something. Uh, in case I forgot someone because I'm not reading the chat, I'm sorry, let me know and I get back to yours, okay? So let me share with you exactly what I do. I see Anna Melendez, you have a question? You wanna ask me a date? No? Okay, that's fine. So for example, what day is today? Today is January 22nd, which is a Saturday, right? So let me explain you this one here, what I have here. I'm not sure if you can see from there. Uh, let me close it. Can you guys see? The board that I have on my back. Okay, okay. Let's say you do. And if not, I can send you these notes later. Okay. So, for example, today is January twenty second. January twenty second. I'm gonna give you the the algorithm for this year, two thousand twenty two. All right. So, if you wanna find out what is your birthday this year, just follow this table right here. Okay. January, as you guys can see, is number five. Every month has a number. So January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Each, each of the 12 months has a corresponding number. The number for January, as you guys may see here, is five. So if you want to find out what is January 22nd, what you need to do is January is a five, make it a five. And the 22 is, is just, just keep it as 22. What is five plus 22? You guys are mathletes, so you probably know the answer really fast. What is five plus 22? 27, of course. So guess what? 27. That's the number that you're going to look at. And that's the number that you need to divide by seven. When you divide 27 by seven, what is the remainder? I don't care about how many times. I care about the remainder. I know seven goes three times into 27. And that tells me that the remainder is six. Do you guys agree with me? Yes or no? Because maybe I made a mistake. Cool. So check this out. If it is a six, the answer is right here. Saturday. Every day of the week has a number. Sunday is zero, Monday is one, Tuesday is two, Wednesday is three, Thursday, Friday, and six, which is this case, will be a Saturday. That's why today is a Saturday. So this is the algorithm for 2022. I'm gonna write it down here. Year 2022. Just to give you another, another date, because you wanna be like, yeah, that was today's day, but what about my birthday? For example, Alain, I think you say March 19. March is number one. And 19, 19 plus one will be 20. 
20 divided by seven, remainder six. Guess what? Saturday. That's why I said your birthday is going to be Saturday. All right? So someone asked about August 26. August 26. August will be zero. Actually, let's say August 26. August 26. August is zero. So zero plus 26 is clearly 26. And 26 divided by seven, the remainder is five. Because seven goes three times into 20 into 26, but the remainder is five because 21 is the closest from below multiple of seven. If the remainder is five, August 26 this year is gonna be a Friday because that's what this table says. Just one last one, just to make sure that we understand this. Let's say you wanna do, for example, April 3rd, which I know is Tanya's birthday, April 3rd. April is four, not because, not because it's the month number four, it's just because here in this table, April, is coincidentally number four. So April is actually is the only month in which the 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 the, the number corresponds to the actual number of the month. So April is actually four because of this table plus three. That will be seven. When you divide seven by seven, you know the answer is one, but the remainder is zero. If there is no remainder, that the, that means the date is going to be a Sunday. So your birthday this year, April third, is going to be a Sunday. So that's essentially what I do. And the reason I wanted to share that with you today is because you're going to be part of this amazing competition today. And I think you should know, you should hear my story, of course. In my case, I used to be a professor at the University of Havana, Cuba. I was born and raised in Cuba. And because of these math skills, I was able to, to, to escape the regime that they have over there. In case you guys are not aware, in Cuba, they, they, they say dictatorship right there. So I guess a lot of bad guys running the country. So I didn't want to be part of that country. And I was invited to the Mentech Aggression World Cup. So I'm blessed because I was able to, to explore the world and see, and I, I end up being here in, U, in USA, which is the best country ever. So this is, I call this my home now. And that's why I don't represent Cuba anymore in the competition, I represent USA. So you can say, you can say officially that the world record holder for Canada days is a Cuban American person. So I represent USA every single time. I wanted to share that with you because math saved my life. So I can't imagine what math can do to you guys. Anyway, uh, that's how I do Canada Days. You guys have a question in the meantime before maybe I move to a different topic because I would love to talk about additions, how I do additions, multiplications, because what differentiates me from the rest of the, of, of, I guess of the humans is essentially that, that I practice this a lot. And not only I practice a lot, I have an algorithm, which is great. And I think if you, if you guys have the best algorithm ever, you guys can perform at least twice as fast whatever you guys are normally doing. Because don't, unfortunately in the school, they don't teach you the, the fastest techniques, maybe because they're not for everyone, but you guys are math leads. So guess what? I think these techniques that I have to share with you, they can be useful to all of you, for all of you. So you guys have any questions before I move forward or you guys are, are, are cool? Any questions? Okay, Lucas, you have a question, please. So what's the formula for the day of the week then? For any, I mean, for any year or for 2022? Uh, I guess for 2022. Okay. Because I'm writing it down on paper. The it's formula really essentially is, is the month, the, the, the number that corresponds to the month that you see in this table here, plus the date. And once you add, once you make that addition, you have to divide by seven. Okay, for oh, example, look, okay. let me show you show your birthday really quick so I can show you because it's better to, to show you with an example. What is your birthday? March 9th, 2009. Okay, Dad, I remember saying that wasn't Monday. So March 9th, let's figure it out this year. March 9th, right? So March 9th. Can you see what is the number that corresponds to March? In this table? One. One. So what you do is one plus nine, which is clearly 10. When you divide 10 by seven, what is the remainder? Uh, three. Three. And three means the third day of the week started by Monday being the first one. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's what this table is telling you here. So your birthday this year is going to be on a Wednesday. It's going to fall on a Wednesday. Does that make sense? Wow, that's amazing. It is, right? Thank you. <laughs> I love it. Anybody else that wants to try or you guys are good? Anyone else? 
All right. So essentially, that's my algorithm. Do you guys, can you guys figure it out? Why do you have to divide by seven? You have, you guys have a clue of why? Of course, all sir, Candid. I'm not sure if I said your name correctly, so please correct me if I said it wrong. I'm sorry, I cannot hear you. I know you're on mute, but I cannot hear you. Because there's seven days of the week. Of course, of course, of course. That's the reason why. That's why we have to divide by seven because we have seven days in a week. All right? So any questions before I move forward to the next topic? Any questions? You guys are good? You want to ask me one more version before we move forward or not? Are you guys very ready? Very ready? Maybe this is going to be in your exam. You never know, right? All right. So let's talk about addition, which is another thing that I do. As you guys may know, in order for me, I, have, I, I hold the world record because I can add really fast. If you cannot add really fast, there is no way you can be, you can have a record, I guess, okay? So I guess this algorithm that I taught you, it will tell you the day of the week for any given date because that's a good technique. But the truth is that that's not enough. Not only a good algorithm will make you the best in the world, but at least it will make you the best you can be, which is what is important now. So if you wanna be, if you wanna go to the next step and, go, and be one of the best in the world, then you need a lot of practice. Okay, and of course you need to practice in a way that is efficient. So what do I mean by being efficient? Let me show you with an example of addition here. If I ask you, if I ask you the following question, I just wanna know how much, how much you guys know without me teaching you. What is 75 plus 98? Can you guys tell me using your mind, no calculators allowed here? Who can, who? 173. 173. How you did it so fast? You mind sharing with, with us how you did it so fast? Well, first I added the five and the eight to get 13, and then I carried the one over to seven and nine, which is 17, adding the three. I'm surprised. So you actually did the school way, right? I guess, right? What was that? You Sorry. actually did what they taught you in the school. Right, five plus yes. eight, 13, and the, okay, and you did it really fast. Okay, so I have some good news for you. You can do it faster. Okay, I know you did it super fast, don't get me wrong, but you can do it even faster. What you need to do is knowing the complements. Let me explain what I mean by the complements. 98, how many more to get to 100? 98 plus what is 100? Two, right? So two is what I call the complement of 98. So all you need to do in this case, it's just take away the complement of this one. If you take away two from 75, that will be 73. So the answer is clearly 173 because 98 is the same as 100 minus two. And believe it or not, this is way faster than you adding the 98 to the 75. You have to think of 98 as 100 minus two. That will give you like a huge uh, windows of opportunity to do everything in your, in your head. Let me explain you why. In this case, you were able probably, Elena, you were probably, you, you were able to do it because it was only two digits by two digits. But what if you have a three digit by three digits? I'm sure you can do it, but maybe not as fast as you did it before. So let me give you another example. Let's say you have, four ninety six plus two eighty five. When I look at this one, the way I do it is the following. I look at this one. I know it's super close to five hundred. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add 500 to this one, which will make it 785 and then take away four. In other words, I'm trying to make powers of 10, powers of 100. You know why? Because we use the decimal system. Most of us, we have 10 fingers and we need to take advantage of that. That's why we use the decimal system. That's why we have 10 digits. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 digits. We started with using the decimal system precisely because most of us, we have 10 fingers. So guess what? 500 is a number that is really easy to add, right? So let me just give you an example. In this case, I think you probably got it. I don't have to explain this, one, this again, but I'm going to say one more time. And then you tell me, you know, we got it. So 496, make it 500 minus four, and then add 500 to this one, which is 785 minus four, 781. Maybe that's what you guys do but you must do it every single time you can. That's my advice. So you need to learn the compliments. When you ask me, for example, 63, I know right away 37 is a compliment to get to 100. 
If you tell me any number, I can't tell you less than half a second. What is a compliment? 82, 18. What are you telling me? I can tell you what is it, what, what is it that you need to get to the next one. And that will help you a lot because, for example, you have here 82 plus, let's say, I don't know, let's say 48. I know this compliment here is 18. So I'm going to take away 18 to 40, from 48, that's 30. So 130, really quick, right? I know you guys can do it really quick too. So anyway, so I, want, I would like to share with you uh, what can you achieve if you practice long enough? I'm not sure if I can share my screen. I think I can, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm, so I'm gonna, maybe you can give me access to share my screen so I can share something interesting here, which is called essentially flash math. Tanya was saying that I was, I was, I was blessed because I was invited to the Ellen show uh, a few years ago, right, uh, right before the pandemic, and and I was able to do something that's called flash math. Exactly, Mason, great, great job. Yeah, you can do that too. So flash math is essentially a bunch of numbers that are going to be flashing, and you need to add them as they go. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to share my screen right now, so I can show you a software that I have. Let me see if I have it here, if I can find it here. If not, I will. Okay, I have it here. I don't know if you guys can see my screen. Can you guys see my screen? Okay, so these right here are two digit numbers. That's why I say number of digits two, 10 of them, and they're gonna be flashing 300 milliseconds. Okay, 300 milliseconds, in case you're not familiar, is, is, is 0 0.3 seconds. So one, probably one third of, of a second. So for example, let me just show you how fast this is gonna be. I'm not gonna tell you anything. 46, 45, 70, things like that, right? That's how fast it, it can be, right? Uh, can we do a test? Maybe, can you guys try to do it? I know it's, I know it's really, actually, let's try with an, another one, which maybe is a little easier because it's gonna be just one digit. You think you guys can, can try this one? And we're gonna try 500 milliseconds, which is half of a second. Ready? Set, go. Zero plus two. Who got the answer? Type it or tell me. We got a winner or not? I don't have access to the chat right now. <laughs> Let me stop sharing so I can. Okay, anyone? Because I, I cannot read the chat. Most of them are saying 39. 39. Okay, I'm not sure who said that because I, I was not able to, but I'm going to check. I'm going to put 39. I'm going to click OK. If Actually, I'm going to make it wrong. I'm going to put 38, which I know is wrong. So you guys can see it's going to correct me to 39 because I agree. It's 39 the answer. Incorrect, you answer 38, and the correct answer is 39. Can you guys see that or no? Right? Okay. So let's try two digits. Let's see if you guys can do it. You guys ready? I'm going to say one, two, three, go. Ready? One, two, three, go. If you guys want to take a wild guess, be my guest. What is the answer, guys? Anyone? We have 582, 3, 582. Okay, 3, that's a good 374, one. 374, 423. If my math is right, I think it's, uh huh, uh huh. What else? Uh, 160, 392, 476. And oh, there was everyone that say 500? Like I lost. Okay. It. I think the answer was 551. Okay, which is pretty close to one of the answers that you mentioned there. I'm gonna click OK. And if I get it right, if I get it right, since you guys got it wrong, you have to give me a round of applause. I, I cannot hear you, but maybe you have to mute yourself uh, like, because I wanna hear you, okay? You guys ready to, to okay, let's, yes, there you go, correct. The answer is 551, excellent. Okay, so let me show you exactly what you guys can do if you practice this long enough, I'm telling you. I. I, I use a combination between what I taught you here about compliments, plus I use the subtle one. 
I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the Solomon. Solomon is a Japanese tool similar to the Abacus, and essentially that helps a lot with addition. So in case you are want to get more familiar with this, maybe you can share some information later with Tanja and we and they can send, send it to you. All right. So I'm gonna do that. So this is what I'm going to do right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you what I did on the Ellen show. I was able to do 300, then 200, then 100 milliseconds. Okay. So we're gonna skip the 200 because we already did one of them. So we're gonna try 300 milliseconds right now. You guys ready? So I think if you say the answer correct this time, you're gonna obtain 10 points for the competition. Nah, just kidding, just kidding. But it would be nice, right? <laughs> so ready, set, go. Okay, if my answer is right, I got 457. If I get it wrong, that's fine. You give me another chance. But if I get it right, you know what to do, right? There you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And let's do one last one, the last one with 100 milliseconds. Okay. 100 milliseconds. Let me just show you how fast it's going to be. I'm not going to do it this time. I just want to, I just want to show you how fast it's going to be because I need to get, get to the rhythm. So I'm just going to show you this time. I'm not sure you guys can see from there, but it was pretty like, it was blinking really fast, right? So the only advice that I have, if you want to try something like this, and you're, let's say you're good because you mastered the Sullivan and you mastered all the compliments. The only extra advice that I have for you for this one is this, is this one. Do not blink. If you blink, you miss a number. All right? So let's try this time for, sh for sure. One, two, three, go. I got 650, 650. If I get a run, that's fine. That's, that's really hard. But if I get it right, you know what to do. Let's go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So essentially, that's what you can do if you practice addition long enough with the right technique. I always say that in order to break a record, of course, you have to be, you have to have a great algorithm. And more importantly, you need to essentially practice a lot. I think that's the most important part. Now, in this case, honestly, I don't, uh, there is a third component, which I think is your natural talent. But I guess that's the least important in my opinion, because you either get it or you, you either have it or you don't have it. So there is nothing you can do about it, okay? So in my opinion, the most important part is the practice. Because maybe you cannot be the best in the world, but at least you can be the best you can be. Does that make sense? So that's, that's what I want you to, when you leave today, before, you, before your competition, that's, what, that's, the, message, that's the main message I, want, I would like to transmit to you today. Just try your best. If you can be the best in the whole world, do it for you. If not, that's, that's okay, as long as you can be the best version of yourself, okay? That's why, that's why I wake up every day, try to be better and better and better. If I fail, I try the next day until I, I achieve. Again, because the mission is to be the best you can be. So let me share with you another thing that I do about, you guys have a question in the meantime, or it's okay if I move to, to multiplication because I know we don't have that much time. So you guys have a question or is it okay if I move forward? Okay. Are you, are you guys having fun? I think Karen um, asked a question. Do you ever mess up? Of course, I do all the time. I do it all the time, especially at the beginning. Uh, the truth is that I practice a lot. So what you guys think is, is hard, maybe for me it's not that hard because I've been practicing a lot. So yeah, but I do, I do. Actually, this, the one with 100 milliseconds, I miss, I miss it like 10% of the time at least, or maybe more, maybe 15, 20% of the time. I got lucky that there was a 99 right there that it was easy for me to add. And when I see huge numbers, people get scared of huge numbers. But in my case, I actually get happy when I see huge numbers because I can't find the compliments really fast. So I guess I was lucky this time. But yeah, around 85% of the time I get right and maybe 15% of the time I get it wrong for the 100 milliseconds, yes. Yeah, it happens all the time. And guess what? If it happens to me, I'm okay with it. Because one thing that I have learned is I have to deal with with what other people call fail. I never call it fail because I try. If I try, come on, I'm already, I'm already a winner, you know? Anyway, let's talk about multiplication really quick. 
And I would like to share with you the technique that I use taking advantage of the decimal system, okay? Because we use the decimal system, that's why it's, it's kind of easy, or let's say simple, because I don't like to use the word easy. Let's say simple to multiply by 10, multiply by 100, because all you have to do in case you're multiplying an integer by 10 is just to add a zero. And if it is, if it is by 100, just add two zeros, right? Now, unfortunately, we don't take too much advantage of that. So what happens, for example, when you multiply by five? Can you guys tell me what is the next multiplication? For example, if I ask you, I'm pretty sure you guys can do without any help. But let's see. What if I ask you, what is 36 times five? Can you guys tell me really quick? 180, Lucas, great job. How you did it? Can you share me? Can you share your technique? Can you explain what you did? Lucas, maybe you want to, uh-huh. Well, 30 times five equals 150 and six times five equals 180. So I just quickly did that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I like, I like, I like your technique. I think I do have another one that may be more interesting or maybe not, you tell me. But the one that I use is, is a slightly different. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna ask you one more question to all of you. And let's see if you guys can do it because I'm pretty sure this one's gonna be a little harder with, the, with Lucas' technique. What if I ask you what is 2,468 times five? Of course, get a minute. I'm gonna write it here. Most of us are visual learners. So once you visualize the problem, it's easier for you to do it. Yes, Nicholas, great job. Do you mind explaining how you did it, Nicholas? Because I think you were the first one who answered correct, I think. Nicholas Hoffman. Can you unmute yourself or, or not? Yeah, please. Yeah, um, I did um, 2,000 times five, then 400 times five, then 60 times five, then eight times five. Then eight. So you actually did what I call the long way. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm gonna teach you another technique if you don't mind, because you were fast, you weren't the fastest. However, if I teach you this technique, I'm pretty sure you can be even faster. So when you multiply by five, don't forget that five is half of 10. Remember, five is half of 10. We have to take advantage of that. And why is that? Because we're using the decimal system. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do half of this. And whatever I get, I'm going to multiply by 10. In other words, instead of multiplying by 5, the same way that Nicholas described, I'm just going to do this. And now divided by 2 is super easy. All you have to do is half each digit. Half of 2, 1. Half of 4, 2. Half of 6, 3. Half of 8, 4. And finally, because you have to multiply by 10, get a 0. Done. In my opinion, tell me, Nicholas, if I'm wrong, isn't that a little faster than what you did? So that's what you guys need to do. That's what you guys need to do. You probably have a question, the most evident question here is like, yeah, that was easy because all the these were even. What if these are odd, right? So let's talk about that one really quick. No, I don't think so. I'm not going to explain you why, Ms. Melendez. For example, let's say you have a huge number. Let, can you guys tell me a huge number? Like 36,000 something? Actually, I'm going to invent one number. 36,872 times five. Okay? I'm going to explain you the D by D approach. Honestly, I use a little more sophisticated approach in which I go by two digits or sometimes by three digits. So let me show you. Half of three, three doesn't have a half. Okay? It's one, but the thing is that half of three is 1.5. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a one and I'm going to add 10 to the neighbor. Why is that? Because 36, just look at the 36. It's the same as 20 plus 16 more. So in mind that instead of a three, you have a two, which will make it this a 20 plus 16. That's why every time you get a half, you must give 10 to the neighbor. So again, when the D is odd, just put the result without the 0.5 and just give 10 to the neighbor. And let's continue. Exactly, I think someone already got the answer. So half of 16, eight. Half of eight, four. Half of seven, remember seven is odd, is three and a half. So it's gonna be three, and you're gonna give 10 to a neighbor. And finally, half of 12 is six. And do not forget to write the zero at the end because you're multiplying by five. So technically you're divided by two. This is the technique to divide by two, and then to multiply by 10 later 
which will make the answer 184,360. You might think it's complicated, but I invite you to try your way mentally. Remember, we're doing all this mentally. Have you seen me grabbing a piece of paper? No, I'm just calculating as I go. So I'm, I'm doing what I call mental math. And when I mean mental math, I don't mean with a piece of paper. I mean all mental without writing ex anything except the result. The fastest way to multiply by five is doing half and then times 10. Same thing, for example, when you want to multiply by 25. Just to give you an idea, let's say you want to multiply 24 times 25. Can you guys tell me the answer? What is 24 times 25? What is it? 600. Excellent. Great job, Anna. Now, do you mind sharing, Anna, how do you do it? Twenty-four times twenty-five. Did anybody else get six hundred? You want to explain how you do it? I'm going to show you how. I'm going to share with you how I did it. Oh, you did four times six times twenty-five. Okay, that's good. And I guess somehow you probably did four times twenty-five first. So you're probably using the same way, the same technique that I normally use. Twenty-five is the same as a hundred divided by four. So all I have to do is essentially twenty-four divided by four. That will be six. And then times 100, 600. It will, be, it will help you to understand that 25 is the same as a quarter. So if you have 24 quarters, 24 times 25 is the same as 24 quarters, you have $6. Just because you can make groups of fours, you can make six groups of four, and each group will represent $1. So we're talking about $6 right here. So next time you multiply by 25, don't forget to divide by four first, and then multiply by 100. Just to give you one more, let's say you have something like this, 828 times 25. Okay, 828 divided by 4, do half twice if you have to do it. That will be 207. So 207 with two zeros. Boom, that's the answer, 20,700. And you can do all that mentally. Again, mentally means like you are you're doing your, let's say you are in a competition or you're simply talking to your mom or your dad, and you need to resolve this question, guess what? You don't need to grab a piece of paper. With having your brain, that's more than enough. So you can do the, the whole math completely mentally. You get 20,700. You guys like this approach? Yes or no? Excellent, excellent. I love it, I love it. So again, I do whole multiple world records about mental math, and it's because mainly three characteristics. The first one, the one that I, that I don't like, honestly, because it's about the talent. And let's say I have talent. Okay, who cares? You either have the talent or you don't have it. There is nothing I can tell you about that. There is nothing I can inspire you about that. So I think that's the least important thing. So whatever talent you have, it's important to have it. Don't, and don't get me wrong. But there is nothing else you can do with it. You either have it, you don't have it. There is nothing to worry. If you have it, good for you. You don't have it, good for you. That's okay. So the most important thing is the other, the other aspects which are you need to have the best algorithm, the best technique, which is important because if you use the wrong technique, it doesn't matter how, how much talent you have. It doesn't matter how, how fast you try to do it. Then someone else is going to beat you just because they know the best technique, you know? And last but not least, the most important one of all, you must practice a lot, especially when it comes to math. The more you practice, the more of an expert you can become, I guess. So math is mainly about practice, okay? So any questions you guys may have about multiplication, about something else you would like me to, to talk before we finish the presentation? So any questions? Okay, that's a good one. What if, what if the method of multiplying by five, right? If, what if it ends in, in, in an odd number? For example, let's say we have 87 times five. I'm gonna give you an easy one, okay? Half of eight is four, and half of seven, because that's the last digit, you cannot give 10 to a neighbor. There is no neighbor. It's 3.5. But then, because later you have to multiply by 10, this point is going to be essentially 435. In other words, instead of adding a zero at the end, you just add a five, and that will be final answer. Did I explain myself there? In other words, instead of a zero at the end, you just add a five, and boom. That's, that should be, that should work. Any questions you guys may have? 
Okay, I'm the, in my case, I'm the VP of education of this company called EduCup. So I used to have this company, it was called Vieira Academy, in which we, all, we concentrate on teaching for SAT and ACT. But guess what? We decided to go further and try to other aspects. A lot of people want to learn a new language. Let's say you want to learn Spanish or German or English, whatever language you want to learn. In this platform, EduCup, you can find a lot of, a lot of information about that. We have actually around 900,000 students which is a lot, we're proud of it. We're proud of it because we launched the app just uh, in February 2020. So it's not, it's, it's in less than two years, we'll achieve those huge milestones. And we have 60,000 of reviews or 4.8. So it's not because I say that, people are saying that we're, that we're good. So feel free to check it out when you have a chance. Lucas, you have a question. What is your question? Do you have a YouTube channel where you like write all of your, all of your tricks down? I do have a YouTube channel, but honestly, it's not updated. So I guess the, the correct answer is no. But what I can do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start my YouTube channel soon uh, as part of the of EduCup. So I guess I will keep you posted on that. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. So any, any other questions you guys may have? You guys any, you want any advice for the competition that you're going to gonna have in a few minutes? Because I used to be a, com a contestant like you guys. Uh, actually, yeah, when I was your age, yeah, when I was, you guys are 12, 13. So when I was your age, I, I was always in math competitions. So one thing that I normally do, and I do it, I still do it nowadays, I, I try to control my breath. So right before, the thing is that it depends on the kind of competition you guys are doing, but can you guys tell me what is the format of the competition? You have like an hour to answer questions? And do you know you know how many questions do you have? Is it, is it, it's like a fast-paced competition, or or you can go at your own pace? Okay, twenty-five questions in forty minutes. So you, the adrenaline should be high, right? So this is normally what I do. Like in the break that you're gonna take in four minutes or so, try to go to a restroom, whatever you guys have to do, and then try to control your breath by by breathing slowly. You know, like that. And then when it comes to like one minute before the competition. Try to try to go faster, so you can you can have your energy coming to you. And when they when they say start, your energy is gonna be in the maximum, and then you try your best from there. But the main idea is to control your breath. I know it's hard because I'm here on Zoom. It's hard to understand what I'm saying, but just try to control your breath. In other words, try to relax and have fun because at the end of the day, it's not about winning. Yeah, winning. If you win, excellent. I love it. Well, guess what? It's about having fun. The most important part is that hour that you're spending, those 40 minutes you're spending doing the math that you guys love. So that's my advice for you. Have fun, be relaxed, control your breath so you don't get so nervous because it's not much to be nervous. I would be nervous if I were you. So try to control your breath and that's it. I wish you the best of luck to all of you guys. Okay, so any questions? Any questions? I know it's almost time to, to finish. Oh yeah, I know. So, because the topics are about eighth grade, because I see Lucas say that he's in seventh grade and most of the topics of the, of the competition are past seventh grade. So in, in that case, Lucas, I guess you have to, um, you have to grow, my friend. You have to learn new things. You have to, I think you're probably ready to, for eighth, eighth grade stuff. Maybe not this year, or maybe, you, maybe you're ready already, I don't know. So my advice, just try your best, explore your limits. All right, never call it a limit. Just go for more. Okay, if you've been studying a lot, that's, that, that's the best. Hope, I hope for, uh, the best for you. I'm rooting for you, my friend, and for, for you and for all of you, of course, especially the ones that have been studying really hard. So Tanya, you want me to say one more thing or are you good? What? All right, so does anyone else have any questions? I know your right. break is at 1.50, so I, don't wanna, uh, I wanna yeah. make sure that you guys are energized for the big competition. So let me tell you just that it's been a pleasure being with you guys. And I'm gonna make sure that I reach Tanya, gave you guys half a question, just ask her. And I, I, I make sure that I reply back to her. Okay? But right, cool. right now, I'll try to use the techniques that I have for, for mental math. Maybe they, go, they could be valuable for you in the, in, the, in the test that you're about to take. So I wish you good luck, guys. Thank you. All right, let's thank everyone, Professor Vieira. Thank you. All right, guys, so we're going to take um, a 10 minute break.
Um, so use restroom, have some water, and we'll be back here at two o'clock. So same Zoom link. So if you want, you can just keep it open. Um, but we're all going to take a break. And um, I'm going to leave that announcement that you guys can see before you go. And again, we'll come back at two o'clock. We'll see you for the competition. Thank you. Professor Vieira, thank you very much for the presentation. It was very lovely. Thank you, Dr. Maneka. Take care. Thank Bye. you. Thank Talk you. To you later.